let me share my slide to you. This is the additional explanations for your previous slide. Can you see my slide right now? Yes, sir, I see. So, okay, as we have all needed in our lecture note that today we will talk about the cardiovascular system, respiratory system, reproductive systems and movements. And actually there are many other um, organ systems in, in animals as well as in humans, but we um, strictly particularly talk this kind of the topic. So in circulatory organs and in physical designs, we could identify what is the component, what are the component composing the circulatory the systems. The first is actually uh, the heart as an electric pump. So it consists of uh, the something like pump that could generate its own electricity and then it could uh, squeeze and, and enlarge it. And then the second component is the blood vessels function as the pipes. The pipes as a, a kind of ways or, or the, the hollow way for the blood to move. And the third is the float that, you know, moved uh, through the vessels. So that, that, that's all uh, the component that if you want to design the machines, mimic the circulatory organs, then you could consider about these three components about the electric pumps and the pipes itself. So we're going to talk about uh, the functions. I mean, the capability of the herd is up as the electric pump. Here you see that uh, actually when we measure, measure the electricity of that herd during its activity, it could generate the voltage starting from minus millivolts and it could increase to 1.0 millivolts in very short period, generating the its own electricity. So, what what kind of that's um, something unique in, in in the herd, particularly in mammalian herd and vertebrate herd, that it is capable of generating its own electricity and how it could generate its own electricity. That the herd uh, has a, the the very specific muscles. So it's uh, like uh, muscles uh, functions as a wire that could generate its own electricity by by its uh, activity, cellular activity. So probably in in senior high school, we have learned about the pacemaker. We have a natural pacemaker in our herd, and it is composed of the the, the muscle fibers. So there is a sinoatrial node. This is the, the very primary part of our herd to generate the electric and then the electricity will be transmitted into anteroventricular node and then from the anteroventricular node it will be spread out to the bundles of the heat and then it will generate the entire electricity in our uh, heart walls because our heart composed of those muscles as well. So when when the electricity is generated in the sinoatrial node and it will be uh, transmitted into another part and therefore our heart could be squeezed and pumping as well in the same time and, and rhythmicity during our entire life. So since we, we uh, were in our mother wombs until we die, this pump, this electric pump work or uh, proficiently, effectively and continuously never stop. So even you are sleeping, this pumping, this electric pumping still work properly. And when it stop and working, then you will die. <laughs> so um, based on this natural pacemaker, and then sometimes like uh, people with a cardiovascular disease, with a heart problem, heart disease, a uh, kind of, for example, heart damage, and it this natural pacemaker couldn't work properly and there are forest the consequence the herd couldn't work uh, in pumping the blood with in normal conditions and the scientist designs the pacemaker machines that mimic this this capability of sinoatrial nodes to generate electricity 
to, to induce the activity of the herd itself. And you may know about this, uh, this, this machine or pacemaker that it is uh, consists of pulse generator and then uh, the wire like this that directly inserted into the part of sinoatrial nodes and in this region as well. So in, in this ventricles and also in the arterioles of our herd. And this generator also has a battery and this battery will generate the electricity with a very rhythmic pulse. And every time this, this, this machine so, you know, produce its pulse, electric pulse, and then it will be transmitted through this wire and therefore it will trigger the electricity of these muscles in, in sinoatrial nodes and also in these ventricles. And therefore the herd could be functioned as normal as a natural pacemaker. That is the machine inspired by by this kind of the designs of natural pacemaker. And this is also the proper functions of this uh, pacemaker. So this is a uh, implantable generators consists of a machines that could produce the electricity and it, it should be charged by battery. So it has our battery and then uh, that during the, the operations through the operations the wire will be inserted in directly into the lungs, I mean into the herd, and then there will be kind of fixations here. So this this active fixations that will be kind of screwed and directly attached into the, the muscle walls, but there should be kind of the vessel fixations. It's not directly inserted into the muscles, but it's like a touching using the tines. And Whenever this machine generate the, the the pulse, the electric pulse, and therefore the electricity will be uh, also uh, transmitted into this part, into this uh, sinoatrial nodes, as the very primary part to generate the electricity in our herd. So based on the physical concept, actually, we can adopt this kind of machine systems to produce the electric pump the pump that could produce its own energy by uh, pumping it by using these walls to to generate the force and therefore it would uh, it could be used to to yeah to move a kind of the fluid like hydrostatic pump and what's the problem with the giraffe as previously explained by uh Kairunisa and ayu that actually to, that there is a serious problem with the giraffe. Why? Because uh, the distance between the herd and the brain is quite higher. Oh, I mean, longer distance. It's about 2.5. It's sometimes it's about three meters. The distance between the uh, dispositions of the herd. And whenever the giraffe stands, it is mean it it will be very hard for the for the uh, kind of this heart to, to pump the blood into 2.5 meters uh, upward. So it is kind of that um, biological problem that should be solved by the designer, by the God. I mean, and with humans, as you see here, that actually at the position between between the distance between our heart and our brain, it's not so poor. So it's only like uh, 30 centimeter and we uh, uh, we don't face the serious problem in pumping the blood from our heart into the brain. But for the giraffe, it should be a very serious problem if, if the heart couldn't pump it properly. It is meant that uh, only last number of the blood containing oxygen and nutrients that could reach the brains. And therefore, that uh, the giraffes will be dying because uh, the, the brains are really, really absolutely depend on the supply of the oxygen. As, as you know that uh, within that two or five minutes, if our brains couldn't, uh, I mean, obtain the, the proper oxygen number and the, the neurons, our neurons will be damaged permanently. And it is mean that we'll be, we will be dying uh, and, and uh, in functional uh, for, for our brains. 
and how the designs in the Jireb will uh, be designed by the God in order to, to overcome the situations. Uh, so, as previously explained by Hyronisa and Ayusara, actually, uh, the first things, the scientists firstly thought that actually it could be the 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 size of the heart of the Jireb is really, really bigger as compared with the normal mammals. But actually, when they check it, well, this is the, the relatively small in compared with body size. And therefore, that that uh, uh, hypothesis, I mean, the expectations that the, about the size of the herd is not uh, true. And then they try to examine what's, what is the, the, the kind of structural and functional adaptations of the heart in order to be capable of pumping the blood uh, in, in very strong pumping in order to support the blood flow into the brain, like uh, for 2.5 meters at a times. And when they check it, when they check this is the, the giraffe heart and they, they, they operate it and they found it, as you see here, that actually there is a particular modifications that there is incredibly thick walls of the left ventricles. So this is this is the, the blood chambers and this is also the blood chambers but for the left ventricles of the of the heart is really really thick so you hear that it's compared with the right ventricles so in order to to generate the strong force to pump the blood into from from these locations into the brains so the the heart of the giraffes um adapted in uh, by by modifying the, the thickness of its walls. So the walls of the left ventricles become very, very thick. And with this very thick of the walls, composing of that, uh, uh, of course, these muscles of Tule, and it will generate the very strong pumping and therefore it could generate the very strong uh, blood pressure and eventually the blood could uh, reach the brain. So this is the, the key of adaptations, how to, to design the pump that could be work properly without aiding the size. With it in uh, um, I mean, yes, with a with a enlarged the size of the heart. So only by thickening the walls of the heart itself. So the fact find that uh, the scientists found that actually for every 15 centimeters increase in the length of the neck, so we know that giraffes also grows. So uh, when they are very young, so the, the, the length of the necks is also, uh, uh, I mean, shorter. And then the, the older the giraffes and the shorter, the, so, the, the, the longer the necks is. And the scientists found that for every 15 centimeter increase in the length of the necks, so uh, the distance between the herd and the brain, of course, and it will uh, increase the left ventricle walls at another five, 0 0.5 centimeter. So the 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 thickness of this left ventricle walls is uh, positively associated with the length of the necks. So the longer of the necks and the, the, the thicker of this left ventricle walls, a kind of adaptation. So this is also the same examinations, like anatomical examinations of that of ventricles and also this uh, right ventricles and left ventricles walls and they found this one kind of uh, so this is the normal uh, heart like also found in humans so the left ventricles and right ventricles uh, have the very similar thickness of the walls but for the g reps see here that left ventricles walls is very thick is very thick is compared with the right ventricles and also the valves, I mean, uh, the, the, the septums the, uh, that separated about two chambers, left and right ventricles, also very thick compared with this one. And when they also check the, uh, the blood vessels, you also hear this is in, in normal mammals, like you also found in humans, uh, that the walls of the outer top, the kind of the major blood vessels from the, from the heart, is also not so thick compared with this one. So this is the blood vessels in giraffes. So 
in order to support the blood pressure, the very strong high pressure that previously uh, Kyle and I state that uh, in Europe, or when they are working or like uh, walking or running, the blood pressure could uh, be increased into like oh, 270. There is no normal blood pressures. In human, that's uh, kind of devastating. It could kill you with kind of the, uh, the very high blood pressure. So, but in giraffe, because the thickness of the wall of the ventricles and also the very thick walls of the blood vessels, and they could be adaptable with very high blood pressures. And the another problems with a very long neck. So actually, there is a benefit of having very long neck because they could reach the foot easily, like uh, taking the leaves on the trees easily. But the another problem besides the how to generate the pumping from the heart into the brain. But the second problem is faced by the giraffe that when they, uh, for example, lower their head, I kind of this, for example, they want to drink water. And that there will be a very, uh, very big problem against the gravity. What is that? It, you know, the functions of the heart also as the chambers, uh, uh, a kind of the reservoir for the blood. And therefore, whenever the, the blood, uh, whenever they lower their brains and their heads to drains or for taking some, something uh, on the ground, and they will face the problem that, that the blood may fall very, very strongly. It's like you, you put in water from the very high distance and then it could be like a very strong pouring and it will be have a very serious problem for the for the giraffe itself. But what is the, the particular design to overcome this problem? As you see here that actually they have a very specific valve in their blood vessels. So valves in the neck arteries, so this is the neck arteries, keep giraffes from passing out when they have to leave their leap hats quickly. So they, they will be very, very oh, well designed and therefore there is no problem because they, uh, this design, this pipe designs uh, could prevent the, the very oh, high pouring of, of uh, blood from the, from the, uh, uh, the heart into the brains when they lower their brains. Next, we will look to the respiratory organs. So when previously we are talking about uh, the uh, cardiovascular systems, we are also talking about the pump. And here also in the respiratory organs, there is also a pump and also pipes. The lungs function as a pump and the airways and our, our uh, like a trachea, bronchus and bronchioles, that all uh, airways function as a pipes. And here it is, there should be the air freezer that could, um, you know, generate the movement of the air from outside into inside or in rivers from inside into outside. And also there should be the supporting, supporting muscles, uh, including the diaphragms, uh, diaphragms and also the chest muscles that could uh, induce the pumping functions of the lung. Is. So in the respiratory mm -hmm. organ, as you see here, this is the, the pumping and perfusion as well, but there should be the pipes. So the pipes, including the airways here, with a very major weight airways and then the bronze for the tracheals and then the very smaller and until the very, very micro or tiny pipes here to reach the every single cells of, of the lungs itself. And uh, as a supported, supported muscles uh, to, to support the pumping functions of the lungs, we can see here that uh, there should be diaphragms here, and that should be the muscles uh, around our chest. And this is the machine that could be made to generate the pumping functions uh, working to, oh, you know, to transport the air inside and outside. So uh, talking about the, uh, the uh, ventilators, so you see here that uh, I mean this pandemic situations during a uh, COVID uh, pandemic, we also noticed that uh, the 
uh, requirement for, I mean, the needs for the regulator, for ventilators uh, is, uh, you know, really, really, very high in every uh, hospitals and uh, supporting units in order to uh, keep up the patient to be survived because they have a problem with uh, uh, how to fix the oxygen to how to take the oxygen into their lungs properly and therefore the oxygen could be transmitted into the blood and then the oxygen could be used to generate the respiratory systems i mean respir respiratory reactions in our cells like uh, in our mitochondria and our cytoplasms and uh Talking about the ventilators, as previously also have been explained by uh, Kyle and Ayu, uh, the patient uh, has a facing a problem, serious problem, because uh, their lungs fail to be function as as uh, machines to to take up the oxygen and also to to take out the carbon dioxide in, uh, from our body, and the scientists designed these machines uh, mimicking the functions of of our lung itself. So it should be kind of the pipes, airways, and also should be this pumping ventilators. So kind of the pumping and should be the pressure as the, the, uh, to generate the uh, airflow. And there should be a kind of the pipe that mediate the insertions of, of uh, this pipe into our, directly into the our, our Airways and the most important also that should be kind of humidifier, humidifier, uh, it uh, could generate the heating to so increase the temperatures of that uh, uh, gas, from uh, and from uh, uh, and also go to our body itself. So be aware with this kind of systems actually the intubator, uh, it very very painful to be inserted into our airways and but it, this is a uh, the single choice for the patient so therefore they, they have to be uh taking this this uh treatment and this is kind of intubator as a mediation to to insert the pipes later and then the pipes later will be inserted inside into our airways and therefore we could be uh transmitted the, the oxygen directly into the lungs. But the problem is also the, the ventilators will be failed in working in, in oh, mediating the uh, gas exchange from our body into the outside or uh, to transmit the oxygen from the lung into the blood when the lung is damaged. So when, when the lung is in, in healthy functions, it is mean it could uh, be perfused by the oxygen. So oxygen could be diffused into this uh, tissue in the capillary here, and therefore the, God, the, the oxygen could be changed uh, into the blood and then, then uh, fix it by hemoglobin, and therefore it could be uh, transmitted into our entire body by uh, tra transportations of the blood. But the problem when, when the, the lung is damaged and therefore the perfusions, I mean, the transmission between the lung itself and the blood fail to transmit the gas. So the carbon dioxide could then be moved out from the lung into the, into the outside and, I mean, from the blood into the, into the lung and from the lung to the outside and the oxygen as well could then be transmitted from the lung tissue into the blood and therefore uh, transmitted into the, our entire body. So, in this case, the ventilators couldn't be worked properly because the ventilators only could, uh, you know, just just a kind of them seen that will transmit the oxygen from the outside into the our lungs, and it is up to the lung whether the oxygen will be transmitted into the blood or not. So, depend on that healthy of your lungs. Then the, the the next is about the reproductive uh, organs. So I just want to take the particular designs of the wounds and also the the amniotic sacs. Why? Because it could inspire you as the physics uh, uh, to to design a kind of the machines or kind of a uh, uh, device mimicking a kind of this. So this is the uterus. 
the place when uh, the, the place where we were growing by our mother from the very single cells into our uh, billion of the cells and the very functional organs systems of our body and when we check for the design so it's kind of the, like the balloon here and a, a, a kind of the balloon with um, the, com composed of the muscles uh, of the walls so the walls of the uterines or or uterus or wombs it's composed of the muscles and the muscles that could be uh, contracted or relaxed uh, by the electricity activations and this is the the kind of the bird waste into the vagina and what what we could notice here in in basic views that actually this uh, I mean the arrangement of the muscles of the uterus is a very very unique like this so this is the muscle fibers the muscle fibers compose of this uh of these chambers as a place of our uh, livings when we were uh, in vetals and this is also so the design is a very sophisticated and uh, it it support us. It support the baby inside, and it also protect the baby inside, and and it is also uh, make it easier for mother to to give birth this baby when it's time for baby to be birthed. And so we could mimic kind of the design to to uh, you know design the device uh, for this uterine. And this is also the 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 anatomical views of uh, worms so this is the muscles composed of muscles with uh, the particular arrangements like this this is the muscle fibers and we we were living here actually in this chamber and we have this one uh, we were supported by this amniotic sacs so we are living in the bubbles actually so this is amniotic sacs we are living inside here uh, when we were baby. So uh, this is the real situations and this is like imaginary situation. So this is the amniotic sacs. What is the functions of the amni amniotic sac? This is a uh, very, very strong sac actually. And very, uh, even it's very thin layers of this uh, walls of this. So we are keeping here. Sorry, I pulled it. So this is the, the walls of our mother's uh, uterus and then inside also we are protected by this kind of the amniotic sacs. So what is the functions of the amniotic sacs? It protects us from any kind of the physical factors like uh, shaking, like um, and even any kind of the physical uh, uh, disturbance from the outside. So you, you we are living very well here. We, we could like a rolling and kicking and, and even jumping here actually every times. So the baby could be rolling, rolling, rolling uh, like this and then move uh, in, in, in rivers like upside down in, during the positions. It depends on, on mother's uh, positions. And this amniotic sex has been a very tight sex, but this is very functional uh, organs that support our living inside the worms and are, are also in every single uh, mothers of mammals uh, having this amniotic sac. And uh, besides the sac, inside of this also there is a amniotic fluid. So this is actually not the empty space, but there is a fluid here, many kind of uh, uh, water here. So you, well, maybe in the future you will be a mother, so be prepared. I mean, be because of a uh, uh, well hydrated drink, a proper water is really, really important for the pregnant woman. Why? Because it will uh, support the, the, the concentrations and also the volumes of the waters inside the amniotic sacs. And the, the problem, the big problem, the worst problem will, will come if, if that's uh, amniotic waters, I mean, amniotic fluids, the, the waters inside here is contaminated and also dry, like when your mother suffering of dehydrations or chronic dehydrations, it will kill you because 
you will be exhausted and you could move it, you couldn't move and many kind of the physical taxes aside like uh, when when your mother riding a motorcycle, for example, you have a very uh, serious problems in a kind of the shaking, uh, severing for you and, and you will maybe die inside of your mother's worms. So there, so there will be amniotic fluid and this amniotic fluid could be socket when we want to take the, 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 the functional systems of this baby inside. So when you want to generate uh, the genetical analysis for this baby, whether this baby, for example, uh, bearing the mutations or disease and the medical uh, uh, stops will, uh, I mean, could uh, collect this amniotic fluid by injecting the walls of your mother's wounds and therefore collect this amniotic fluid and taking it in the lab. So they could take uh, the, the because we release many cells into this kind of the fluid and therefore it could be checked during, uh, using these samples. And also like in bird, bird also has uh, the amniotes, but the, the amniotes is a very, this is the amniotes sacs in, in the bird, but because the bird uh, could, then, uh, could not obtain the food from its mother because it's lived inside the eggs and therefore it should be there is the food storage here, call it a uh, yolk sac. So this is the yellow part is as a, the food storage for the for the batters. And uh, recently, the the medical scientists also designed the machines mimicking the wombs of mothers. So they uh, have been successfully designed these machines to support the lives of this. Uh, I mean premature lambs, kind of goat here. And and it, there's a machine that's supporting the gas exchange and also nutrients of drip. So this, uh, the, the oxygen from these animals uh, living inside this is the very, very younger uh, fetals of the lamb. And these uh, sacs uh, mimic the amniotic sacs. So, so based on this kind of designs, kind of this machine designs, the scientists could also design these machines to support the lives of this very premature of the lambs. So for the latest one is uh, about that movement. So talking about the ploid, actually it could be inspired by many kind of the bird. You see here that actually the eagles inspired that uh, the the, the plane for fighting, the, the, so this is the fighter jet used by USA, so it is really, really inspired by the structures and the aerodynamics of the eagles. And uh, what is the supportive structures uh, that could uh, mediate the aerodynamic functions of the flight of the bird, actually the muscle itself, they, have a very strong muscles and a very well structured the muscles and therefore they could flip in a very, very or sufficient ways in order to be able to apply uh, or the skies. And also this is the, the aerodynamics dynamic of their uh, wings. So you see here that uh, rigid air freezer here because these structures and then concern air freezers and therefore uh, it could lift up, so the, uh, based on the structures, it could lift up the body uh, into the upper part because because the the very different uh, of the air pressure between the lower part and and uh, in the upper part, and also it could be uh, inspired. I mean, it could be adopted by this aerodynamic uh, plane. This is the wings of the plane, also like this. The content air pressures in the upper part, in the lower part, in the richest air pressures, the lower air pressures in, in the upper part, and therefore it's kind of the, uh, it could lift that kind of this bird and also the plane itself. And uh, using the microscope, like uh, scanning electron microscope, the scientists also takes this kind of the very fine structures of the bird feeder and you see here that uh, they ha also have a very, very aerodynamic feeder that every single uh, uh, positions of this and arrangements of this 
this uh, viewers support the the function, the aerodynamic functions in order to make the bird that could fly above the sky. And is this kind of the conclusion for for the story of this uh, organ systems and animals that the designs found in organ systems in every kinds of animals like in bird, in giraffes, and other kinds of animals, and including humans, uh, could be adopted in designing the mechanical systems using PESA concepts. And this is really, really relevant if you want to create the functional machines, the functional device that could be used in, in our life, like when you want to design this kind of the plan, for example, or kind of this machines, or also like a uh, uh, kind of the structures of this way, for example, the ventilators itself, and also this pumping, a uh, kind of the hydrostatic pumping. So I think that's all for me. Oh, hopefully that you will be understand about it and could be inspired as the physics uh, when we talking about uh, what is the something like a magic in science, something in magic in biology, and uh, and therefore it could be inspired uh, many scientists, many 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 of you to design the device because in physics, uh, I know like uh, Pa Dian in physics department, he is really really uh, smart in designing the the device like uh, instrumentals, many kind of instrumentals, because in your department you also have uh, the instrument, instrumental laboratory. So many kind of the machine that could be designed by uh, adopting that uh, uh, biological concepts like uh, hydrostatic pumps and sensors and any kind of the machines. So that's all for me. Uh, so we can discuss right now any questions about our lecture today. If you have any questions, so please access directly and we can discuss it uh, with uh, Kailanisa and IU as well. So please, okay, please Nabila, you have any questions? Oh, yes, oh, yes I, have, I have a question. Oh, how oh, can, how you, can you, you get in live live in the brain? brain? I mean, I mean how, can you, how can you, can you, can you Sorry, Nabila, uh, I couldn't hear your voice clearly. Oh, oh. Okay, could you repeat it again? Hello, sir? Hello, sir? Yeah, yeah. Oh, how can oh, humans feel alive? It doesn't have a brain. I mean, how can you feel like the split of the organs still coordinate even if they are taking care from the brain? From the brain. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear it properly. Can you can you write it in the chatting? We have a chatting actually. Uh, this is right, in the conversation. Right, right. Yeah, you can write it because I'm sorry because I couldn't clearly hear about it. So you can type it and then I will read it. Can you find the chatting? The conversation part, so you can type your question there. Oh yes, mm -hmm. okay. yeah, okay. So you can, you can write it. So since Nabila uh, typing uh, her questions in the chatting form, and then any other questions from other students, Lindu, Tuti, and also from Vajri, and also Nikan, roughly, roughly, are you sleeping? No, sir. Oh, <laughs> I thought that you are talking a nap right now. <laughs> it's time, a sleepy time, actually. Nabila, can you write your, your questions in conversations? In, in, okay, Tuti, please. Yeah, oh, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, as you explained earlier, the baby is rolling. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, can the position of the baby when it's about to be born, it's visible back, not legs or head? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, because the baby live inside the flute. So, like, you are putting a ball inside inside the, 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 the container containing the flute. So, whenever this this kinds of, of ball moving, 
and therefore something inside could also be rolling. And by the act, by because the baby also uh, developed the muscles, and therefore baby also could be rolling by itself. And uh, mm. but uh, the the correct position is when the baby uh, arrives in that in the time when it should be expelled, like the birth times, and therefore the baby will uh, commonly the baby will like this, so upside down. The head will be uh, rolling into the, the lower part and the, the legs will be the upper part. And it will be easy for the baby to be uh, expelled into, into outside of the mother's womb. But sometimes they also kind of this in, in our uh, um, language, say that uh, so it's kind of that, that uh, yes. it's not a hair, but this is the leg. It is also kind of the problems in medical science. Why, uh, for for the medical doctors or for the, for the nurse to support the, the birth of the baby? Why? Because it is very hard for the baby to uh, to uh, to be birth uh, by firstly uh, expose its lack because it should be stuck uh, on its head. I mean, uh, on its neck, and it very big problems, and sometimes. You know, by by the uh, a kind of the force uh, uh, resulted by the hair, also it will be very effectively effectively open the vagina, and therefore the the baby could move very very smoothly outside. But the problem when when it's uh, the baby rolling out in the very wrong directions, and therefore the leg will be the first come out, and it also will will uh, cause very serious problems, and sometimes. The doctors will recommend kind of the Caesar operations because it will also cause the baby to uh, run at the oxygen because it's stuck in its uh, her in its neck. I mean, and sometimes uh, when when the process is not the smooth, so the baby will will suffer of uh, this kind of the damage in the in this uh, bones of the neck. So it's a very very serious problem, and therefore. Yeah, you know, kind of that exercise during the pregnancy also important for for baby to be rolling out in in very and sometimes that uh, actually the medical doctors also could induce the the I mean could uh, correct the positions. So sometimes when, for example, in natural ways the baby it's uh, in wrong positions, the hair is in the in the upper part and the leg is in the in the lower part. But then that the, uh, by kind of applying the mace, the kind of this uh, inductions into that uh, mother's stomach and the warm center for the position could be changed properly. But it's uh, also taking a race and sometimes it should be taken by zero operations. OK, Tuti. Oh, thank you, sir. OK, so Nabila, so this question for Nabila, this is what I want to ask. How can humans still live while it doesn't have a brain? OK, I mean, how can the other organs like respiratory organ systems still coordinating even though they are talking water from the brain? OK, so for example, when we directly, uh, you know, the open operations of the heart, the medical doctors will taking up the will cut the herd from the body and then it will move into the chamber. So it is mean the, the organ is separated from the brain. So there is no controls from the brain. So it's okay actually in many kind of the organs like like in the lungs, also in the liver itself and the kidney and many kind of the organ systems of our body could be work properly without uh, directly connected into our brains. Because the brain functions only as that, uh, you know, a kind of a controller. So only the serious problem when when we separated the organ with the brain is uh, the 